the Davenport automatic screw machine, the cross-working tools, Now that you have learned how to stock the Davenport automatic screw machine, you will learn another important function of the operator, tooling. You already know that the stock is held in place by the chuck, which in turn is contained in the work spindle. You have also been introduced to the cross-working tool positions and their four front cam levers, and the end working tools and their five right end cam levers. Remember that the cross-working tools are mounted on the front slide, the rear slide, the rear tool arm, and the front tool arm. The end working tools are mounted on the tool spindles in the stationary head. Each of these tools performs a specific function on the bar stock in order to machine a finished workpiece. Cutting tools. Cutting tools remove material from the stock in various ways and have different functions. Examples of cutting tools are drills, taps, form tools, cutoff tools, etc. The replacement or resharpening of these tools is called tooling. Before we discuss tooling itself, you must be aware that the operations of the tools are done in sequence. For example, the first operation of a tool on a stock might be primarily drilling from the tool spindle in the first position. The last operation on the stock normally would be in the fifth position when the finished workpiece is cut off from the bar of stock and then drops into the work chute. Thus, at the end of a particular sequence of operations of the tools for a specific job, there will be a finished product or workpiece. This workpiece is always machined to particular specifications and tolerances. In order to maintain these specifications and tolerances, it is critical that the tools are sharpened correctly, sharpened at proper intervals, set properly, and align correctly. The cross-working tools. You were introduced to the front and rear cross slides and the front and rear tool arms in the second tape. The tool arms and the cross slides hold the cross-working tools. The front cam levers operate the cross-working tools. The cam levers are activated individually by the cams and our spring return. The front cam levers, left to right, should be learned as operating in these positions. Three, two, five, and one. The third position front cam lever activates the rear tool arm. The second position front cam lever activates the rear slide. The fifth position front cam lever activates the front tool arm. The first position front cam lever activates the front slide. Half index. Before being tooled, the machine must be moved to half index. When the machine is on half index, the tools are withdrawn as far as possible and it is easier to remove and reinstall the tools and or tool holders. Half index is a point on the non-working portion of the machine cycle where all the tools are at the low point of their cams and the revolving head is halfway between one working position and another. An easy way to determine half index is to note when the top two work spindles are horizontal and parallel to each other. Another way to determine when the machine is on half index is to look at the slot on the bearing spindle opening and closing cam. 
When the slot is at 3 o'clock, the machine is on half index. The tool setting block. An important part of tooling is the tool setting block. The tool setting block is made specifically for each machine. It should only be used on the machine for which it is made. The tool setting block is used to determine the center line on the work spindle. The center line on the spindle corresponds exactly to the height of the tool setting block when the block is placed on the tool slide. Remember, there is only one tool setting block for each machine, and that block should only be used for that particular machine. Never take a tool setting block from one machine and use it on another. If this is done, the tools will not be set to center and will not cut properly because block heights are different. Be sure the serial number on the block matches that of the machine. Components of the tool post. The tool posts are mounted on the front slide, first position, and the rear slide, second position. Parts of the tool posts are the main tool post body, the circular tool adjusting worm, the riser block, the taper adjusting eccentric, the T-bolt and nut, the circular tool adjusting plate, the jack bolt, the tool clamp bolt and washer, the lateral adjusting screw, and the tool clamp. Tool in the front tool post. Tool removal. The front tool post is mounted on the first position cross slide. To remove the circular tool or any other tool from the front tool post, first loosen the tool clamp bolt. Then remove the tool clamp. Take out the tool. Tool replacement and centering. To put a tool back into the front tool post, Follow this procedure. Clean the tool pocket. Note the pin inserted in the tool. Note the holes in the half moon shaped tool adjusting plate. Slide the pin in the tool into the hole in the tool adjusting plate that brings the tool closest to center. Then insert the tool clamp under the tool clamp bolt so that the tool clamp presses against the jack bolt and the side of the tool. Snug up the tool clamp bolt against the tool clamp. The bolt should be just snug. Do not tighten. Note, the adjustments of the tooling in the following tapes has been exaggerated for clarity of viewing. Once the tool has been inserted and snugged up, Bring it to center by following these instructions. Put the tool setting block on the first position cross slide. Be sure the tool setting block is close to the cutting edge of the tool. Bring the tool up to center by turning the height adjusting worm counterclockwise until the tool is even with the top of the tool setting block.
tighten the tool clamp bolt. Then take up the backlash on the worm by turning the worm counterclockwise again. Once the tool has been set to center, remove the tool setting block from the cross slide. Note, if the tool setting block is not removed, it will cause extensive damage when the machine is running. After all the above procedures have been followed, run a workpiece. Diameter adjustment. After a workpiece is run, a diameter adjustment may have to be made in order to change the diameter of the workpiece. This adjustment is made with the turnbuckle. Remember, the front tool post is in the first position. Therefore, this diameter adjustment is made with the turnbuckle associated with the first position front cam lever. If the workpiece must be made smaller, back off the tool post stop screw, and turn the turnbuckle clockwise. Then reset the tool post stop screw. If the workpiece must be made larger, turn the turnbuckle counterclockwise. Then reset the tool post stop screw. Further explanation of the tool post stop screw will be explained in later tapes. Taper adjustment. Once the diameter of the workpiece is corrected, the workpiece may still be tapered or made smaller on one end than the other. To make a taper adjustment, use the taper adjusting eccentric as follows. First, loosen the eccentric locking screw and the nut on the tool post T-bolt. After this is done, swing the rear of the tool post slightly to the right or left by turning the eccentric in the same direction in which the tool needs to be moved. After the adjustment is made, Lock down the T-bolt nut and the eccentric locking screw. Lateral adjustment. Now that the workpiece has the proper diameter and is not tapered, a lateral adjustment might still have to be made. A lateral adjustment is necessary if the tool is not in alignment with the other tools. To make a lateral adjustment, use the lateral adjusting screw. This screw is located between the tool post riser block and the tool slide. To move the tool post closer. To move the tool post closer to the revolving head, turn the lateral adjusting screw counterclockwise to take up any slack. Loosen the nut on the T-bolt. Then turn the lateral adjusting screw counterclockwise again until the tool is at the correct distance from the revolving head. Relock the T-bolt nut. To move the tool away from the revolving head, 
turn the lateral adjusting screw clockwise to take up any slack, loosen the nut on the T-bolt, then turn the lateral adjusting screw clockwise again until the tool is at the correct distance from the revolving head. Relock the T-bolt nut. Tooling the rear tool post. The rear tool post is mounted on the rear cross slide and operates in the second position. Tool removal. To remove the circular form tool or any other tool from the rear cross slide, loosen the tool clamp bolt. Remove the tool clamp. Then remove the tool. Tool replacement and centering. To put the tool back into the rear tool post, follow this procedure. Clean the tool pocket. Note the pin inserted in the tool. Then note the pin holes in the half moon shaped tool adjusting plate. Slide the pin in the tool into the hole in the tool adjusting plate that will bring the tool closest to center. Insert the tool clamp under the tool clamp bolt washer and bolt head. Screw the tool clamp bolt so that the tool clamp presses against the jack bolt and the side of the tool. Snug up the tool clamp bolt against the tool clamp for final adjustment. Do not tighten. Once the tool has been inserted and snugged up, bring it to center as follows. Put the tool setting block on the second position cross slide under the cutting edge of the tool. Bring the tool down to center by turning the height adjusting worm clockwise until the tool is even with the top of the tool setting block. The tool should just touch the block and the block should easily slide out from under the tool. Tighten the tool clamp bolt. Then take up the backlash on the height adjusting worm by turning it clockwise again. Once the tool has been set to center, remove the tool setting block. Now the tool is centered and ready to machine apart. Run a workpiece. Taper adjustment. If the workpiece is tapered, loosen the eccentric locking screw and the nut on the T-bolt. Then swing the rear of the tool post slightly to the right or left by turning the eccentric in the same direction in which the tool needs to be moved. After making this adjustment, lock down the T-bolt nut and the eccentric locking screw. Diameter adjustment. If a diameter adjustment is necessary because the workpiece diameter is too large or too small, make this adjustment with the turnbuckle associated with the second position front cam lever. Note, one flat on the turnbuckle nut moves tooling 14 thousandths, hex nut. If the workpiece needs to be made smaller, back off the tool post stop screw and turn the turnbuckle clockwise.
Reset the tool post stop screw. If the workpiece needs to be made larger, turn the turnbuckle counterclockwise. Reset the tool post stop screw. Note. One flat adjustment on the stop screw is ten thousandths movement. Square head. Lateral adjustment. Now that the workpiece has the proper diameter and is not tapered, a lateral adjustment might be necessary if the tool is not in proper alignment with the other tools. Use the lateral adjusting screw, which is between the tool post riser block and the tool slide. Note, one flat of the adjusting screw equals one sixty-fourth movement, square head. To move the tool post closer to the revolving head, turn the lateral adjusting screw counterclockwise to take up any backlash. Loosen the nut on the T-bolt and turn the lateral adjusting screw counterclockwise again until the tool is at the desired distance from the revolving head. Retighten the T-bolt nut. To move the tool away from the revolving head, turn the lateral adjusting screw clockwise to take up any backlash. 